the disturbing historical practice of gibbeting. Those accused of crime, whether guilty or not, have been subjected to barbaric forms of punishments. The gibbet was another grisly form of torture used to humiliate the criminal and their families even in death. Although sometimes it was even used when they were still alive and they died of heat stroke and starvation. Gibbeting involved the accused being locked into metal cages with mechanisms to keep the body into a human shape. They were hung in the streets 30 feet above ground to deter others from doing the same crimes. The gibbet itself refers to the wooden structure from which the cage was hung. The cages were human shaped and designed to hold the body together. The gibbets varied. There were no one size fits all and each one was started from scratch when designed by the blacksmith. Some were heavy and non-adjustable while others had a notch for the nose to sit. Some gibbets restrained only the torso letting the legs and arms flail around and after years of being erected, they were often turned into souvenirs. The gibbets were designed and used by men only. The female courts were seen as too important for educational reasons, and so their bodies were offered up for dissection instead. Gibbeting was not that popular due to the expense, but when it did occur, it made a huge statement and crowds of thousands attended to watch the fascinating and grisly executions. The practice gained popularity during the 1740s, but living near a gibbet was not very nice. The reek of rotting flesh was so powerful, and birds and bugs would eat their flesh over months. People would be forced to shut their windows, especially when the wind blew the wrong way. The cages would creak and clank in the wind as they twisted and swayed, further scaring the locals into submission, as intended to cause maximum horror. Gibbets wouldn't be removed until the corpse became nothing more than a skeleton, and gibbets often stood for years. Gibbeting lost interest even after a law was passed in 1752 that convicted murderers to be either publicly dissected or gibbeted. People objected to the barbaric use of the gibbet due to the expense and stench, but authorities continued to use it in the hope that the most appalling punishments must deter crime the best, but this was not the case. Murder and lesser crimes did not stop, and there were record levels of crime occurring. It is even reported that a young girl invited a friend to a gibbet to poison her for stealing a job from her. Gibbeting fell out of fashion and the gibbets erected for two accused men were removed by friends of the accused and officials due to fanatic crowds of people clogging the roads, completely blocking the streets. Two years later, the practice was officially banned and although gibbeting is now a thing of the past, fragments of the practice can be found throughout England in small museums where over a dozen gibbet cages remain. Many places were named after the criminals that were gibbeted, and as a result, many of England's towns and regions have roads and features that bear the names of gibbeted criminals, such as Old Par Lane. The names of these places serve as a stark reminder of the grisly punishments that the country once legalised. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories, and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.